How's it going, two percenters? So we've got a short but sweet one here. Well, actually, I don't think it's going to be so sweet. But the situation here, this is a little job I'm doing to help out somebody as part of my little do-it-yourself charity thing. And this person needed a radiator in this 2000 Dodge Durango. The vehicle was towed in because the leak was rather severe. I replaced the radiator. And then when I start the car up afterwards, I noticed that there, in my opinion, seemed to be a little bit of an engine knock. I was a little bit concerned about it. It sounded like a rod knock. I look on the dashboard and we've got no oil pressure. So that's the situation. Obviously, don't want to film doing a radiator. Anybody can do that. But the diagnosis of the low oil pressure, that's something that we do on this channel. So what our concern is, of course, in combination with what I believe is a little bit of a knocking noise, we actually have low oil pressure, meaning the engine needs a rebuild. It would, by the way, be a perfect candidate for the budget engine rebuild that I have on this channel if we haven't worn through the rod bearings yet. The other possibility though is it could be a sending unit issue and maybe the oil pressure is fine. So we're going to go ahead and diagnose it. All right, a look at the oil gauge there. Let's go ahead and start this up. A little bit of a hard start you hear. Again, indicative of low oil pressure. We see our oil pressure is right now fairly reasonable but in just a little bit, we're going to see it go down. So hang on a second here. Let me give it a little bit of gas. Again, I really don't want to run this engine with a... There it goes. It, it just went down right there. I really don't want to run this engine much with suspected oil pressure issue. If I give it gas, the oil pressure does increase. But we'll give it a minute here, and it is going to drop back to zero just like that. Now, again, this could be electrical, but the sound on that starting... And also, um, you won't be able to hear it, but the engine did have a little bit of a knock. There is some concern here, so let's see what we got. Well, my first step is to call the owner, and I did call the owner. He says he is aware that the oil pressure shows zero. It's because when he bought the truck, he was told by the owner that it has a bad oil pressure sending unit, so he wasn't too concerned about it. I, on the other hand, am. So the first thing we're going to do is just a very basic test that any wrench warrior can do to help diagnose this. We're going to drain a sample of the oil and check for any bearing material in the oil. Let's do that first. All right, I have shown this a number of times before, and normally this doesn't show up very well in the camera, but I can tell you I am looking at this, and this oil has a fairly significant, there's a good view of it. Hopefully that shows up in the camera. That should show up. There's a fairly significant amount of bearing material in this oil. All right, basically based on what amounts to pretty much a test Scotty would do, I'm going to agree that this is a valid diagnosis to say that this engine needs a rebuild immediately before any further damage is done. Just based on the bearing material in the oil, the sound of that startup where the engine clearly had some friction on startup, a little bit of knocking, and the variability on the oil pressure, I am confident making the call that the guy was lied to. This is not a sending unit or an electrical issue. There there is legitimate low oil pressure at idle on this engine. Now, that, of course, would be satisfactory in this particular case, but what if the oil was very recently changed? Obviously, a very common thing that I see because people change the oil trying to get rid of the knock sound or whatever, so we may not have that as a diagnosis. Also, for those of us with a synapse, we may actually want to have some more scientific quantitative data. So let's move on and see if there really is legitimately low oil pressure or a sending unit issue. All right, to validate a sending unit issue, our two possibilities are an electrical issue. Uh, it could be also a gauge issue, which also counts as electrical. Could be the sending unit itself is bad. Uh, notice this engine has a distributor. Very often oil sending unit is near the distributor. It is on this vehicle. We're gonna pull this off and, oh, check this out. So uh, this is interesting. Let's see if I can get a shot of this. All right, so if we look here, when I took the plug out to do an electrical test on the sending unit, we see that the whole sending unit actually just kind of came apart right there. Now, obviously, your 98 percenter is going to go, oh, good, it's just the sending unit. The trouble is, I would have maybe thought that if it weren't for that oil test, but I believe this is irrelevant here. I believe that while, granted, this sending unit is broken, it's just that this cap here is just loose on it. And if I put this back on, it is actually going to be functional just fine. 
So let me put that back together and we'll do a proper electrical test on this. All right, admittedly I was a little bit excited there, but then I quickly remembered the other symptoms we have and the fact that the gauge is not consistent with this being a sending unit issue. So what I'm doing is just testing, very simple for the five volt reference feed and let me make sure that's showing up in camera. And this is obviously one step more towards bad news. Whoops, my meter turned off. All right, there we go. So obviously we are on our way to some very bad news. We've ruled this out. And now what the next thing we could do, I could remove the sensor itself. We could look for variable resistance with pressure. That is a possibility. But what I actually want to do is just do a direct oil pressure test. So maybe we will do the test on the sensor itself, just in case you run into the situation and you suspect the sensor. All right, so here you can see the broken sensor, which normally I'd get very excited about, but uh, yes, this sensor is broken, but no, it is not to the point that it is not functional. What happened was when I unplugged the terminal, this part just came off. Actually, it's on pretty strong. There we go. So it's obviously making good contact, and we're going to prove that that's not our issue anyways. All right, so obviously our strategy here is to look for varying degrees of resistance with different pressure inputs. So because the pressure needs to be fairly high, uh, more than I'm sure I could deliver with my lungs, we're going to use compressed air, so this will be a little tricky, but... Okay, and we can see that this is working. Oops, let's make sure we're good here. Okay, so this is definitely working. And if we add more or less pressure, we get variation. So obviously this works. There is no problem with this sending unit. This also clearly indicates that there is almost certainly no problem with the gauge either. So we really, by process of illumination, have no other alternative other than legitimate low engine oil pressure. But of course, we're going to lock that down for good with a engine oil pressure test. All right, so obviously we'll just thread this in and this will be a definitive final test. All right, here a little bit of knocking with the startup. Yeah, it's definitely an engine knock. I'm gonna gently see if we can give this a little throttle. Legitimate oil pressure reading there. We're at 10 PSI. Not good. All right, and that does it. This engine needs a rebuild. Well, unfortunately, a really sad circumstance for this young man. He is definitely going to need an engine rebuild, and it's exacerbated by the fact that, unfortunately, the circumstances ended up where I was not informed of this oil pressure issue until after I did the radiator repair. Obviously, had the guy brought up, oh, by the way, the car also has this oil pressure issue, I would have immediately looked at that first. That wasn't brought up to my attention, and unfortunately, this is the result. So sometimes that's the way the dice roll. But anyway, thanks for watching. I hope you found this helpful. We'll see you next time.